Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and today I'm gonna to be looking at every single extension you can currently install in Craft. Now, Craft just announced their version two last week. I made a video about the extensions and kind of how you install them and everything, but this time I'm gonna actually go into each extension in detail and show you what's possible today so you can see if they're worth trying out for yourself. Now, Craft did announce these as a developer preview and they're available to the public, so anyone using Craft on the Mac, not the iPhone or iPad, but if you're using Craft on the Mac, you can opt into this and start installing these extensions today. But these are really meant to be samples for developers to take a look at, to use, and kind of reverse engineer effectively. The code is available to them so they can kind of use these as jumping off points for building their own extensions. But since they are available to the public, I wanted to take a look at them and just see how they work, if they're useful, if you should try them out or not. So hopefully this video will help you kind of get an idea for each one of these and how they work. But again, it's a developer preview. There will be bugs, there will be just features that aren't there that you might want in a final product. But again, it's a preview, not necessarily even for users, it's for developers, but yeah, that's enough times I've said developers. So let's just jump into it and see what's there. Okay, so I'm on my computer now and I can go to, if I want to enable it, I want to go to my uh, preferences, go to advanced and then craft extensions is the first option. Just make sure it's enabled and you're good to go from there. Um, and then, yeah, you can go ahead and install them from the website. I put that in the other video, kind of how to set those up. So check that out. Um, but now you'll basically see this over here. We're gonna actually bring it up in the permanent sidebar just to make it uh, kind of easier to see everything. So here we go. So I've got basically a daily note set up right now with some tasks, with some headers, some text, basically all that um, good stuff. And I can go ahead and uh, start using these extensions. So the first one is really just for developers. So I'm not really gonna do much with it, uh, but there's this craft X example. And so this basically has functions that does a bunch of the things you can do with the extension framework. So if you're a developer, you wanna download this one, you wanna look at the source code and see how it works. Uh, and they kind of have a basic UI for like doing things. Um, so we can go to like the editor APIs, get selected blocks. Um, so like if we select these three and then say get selected blocks, nothing really happens. But if we look at the console down here, we have uh, get selection button pressed and there were three blocks selected, right? Um, so if I just select those two and say get selected blocks, there were two blocks selected. This is not useful for normal people, uh, but for developers, this might be a good thing to be able to kind of see how these things work and get these functions you can copy and paste into your own project. So this is really a developer focused one. The CraftX example, really only download this if you're going to be developing your own extensions. Now, Craft Snippets is a slightly different story. Um, this is something that makes it so you can create snippets of stuff that you want to make available uh, more easily. So for example, I have this weekly review prep here, right? So this is a heading and three tasks that I have to do every Monday um, with my manager. And so I've already created this as a snippet. So I'll kind of show you how this works. So if I wanna pre uh, put this into my next Monday one, um, I just go to Monday, create a daily note for that one. And then I want to click this and that adds my tasks to this. So my weekly review prep, there are these three. They're not linked in any way to the previous one. So um, that's a feature in my opinion, because I don't want my uh, marking this complete on the 13th to impact uh, having a complete, oh boy, uh, today, right? So today it's still incomplete. I can mark all three of those complete. And then when I go to next Monday, those aren't impacted. So they're totally unlinked, but it is the same content. So that's pretty nice. Um, if I did want to create a new one though, um, I just go to today's notes and let's say I want uh, for whatever reason, these uh, this general notes with these two paragraphs, I just select what I want, I save selected, and then now I've got a new one here, and I can go to like tomorrow's notes and I'll add general notes, and I'll add it again and again and again, right? And so you can just kind of add that, we'll add the weekly review prep, we'll kind of just bounce back and forth. And so it just kind of appends these um, onto your document. I think it'll insert it at the cursor even. So if we do weekly review prep, yeah, so it inserted those above there, and there we go. So. Yeah, that's how that works. Um, it lets you basically save a collection of blocks to basically store and then paste them in a document later on. So that one could be useful to you today. This next one is potentially useful to you today, but is also kind of uh, theoretical in my opinion, kind of a proof of concept of what you can do with the extension system. So this Hacker News Top 10, if I click this, it real time checks with Hacker News to find the top 10 articles on the site. Uh, you can see the titles here with some info on them. You can click this link to see um, kind of the URL. You can click the comments to see the thread. And then oops, uh, you can also insert the stories into this post. So if this was like a daily note thing and you wanted to see at any point the top 10 Hacker News stories, 
you could put them in here and we've got the URLs and Hacker News links and headings and everything. So it's all here. Um, I don't know if this is actually super useful <laughs> to people, um, but you could definitely see kind of versions of this that could be useful to just be able to access like a list of something at any point in time and get it into craft and kind of get those into your document could be useful whether it's Hacker News or not, if that's the source you want, um, really up to you. But uh, that's kind of an interesting one that's definitely kind of just showing what sort of thing can be done outside of just like importing or exporting content. Um, next up, we have exporting content. Um, I'm going to get rid of that list. Uh, and it's called Send to Apps. And so basically, this is a way for you to easily send some of these uh, blocks uh, over to other apps. So instead of like keeping track of my tasks in craft, if I wanted to do these in things, I could just select those three tasks and say, boom, throw them in things. Now they're in my inbox and in things and I can select them here and I can drag them around and put them into a different project, make them do whenever I want, all that good stuff. I could do the same thing with OmniFocus. If I wanted to save like uh, these guys as a document in Ulysses, I can go ahead and do that. And that puts this into Ulysses, so that all works great. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Uh, works similar in Bear and Day One, One Writer or IA Writer, I should say. Um, yeah, those are pretty nice, and these I think are going to be useful to a lot of people um, because you, you may start writing in Craft and then move it elsewhere. It's kind of like how drafts works. You may start writing in drafts and move it elsewhere. Um, it's just kind of linking these apps together and letting you do different things um, easily uh, where you start working in one place and end at another one, I think are really useful. So uh, those are some that are built in there that are pretty cool. Similarly, we have export to blog. And so this one lets you publish your current note to Ghost or to Medium right now. Um, and so if I kind of just don't have anything selected, you want to make sure you have nothing specifically selected. Otherwise, it'll publish like just the part you have selected. So make sure there's nothing selected. You've just kind of got the whole note here. Um, I'm going to go publish to Ghost. Uh, you can see the configuration. And basically what I had to do for Ghost was get a secret key from my Ghost admin, enter the URL of my site, and that was it. And so then I can hit publish to Ghost and it's going to publish the site to Ghost. A few things to note, and I'm not going to publish it right now because it posts right away. Um, I can't do drafts. I can't do scheduled posts. I can't do tags. Oops. I can't um, do, it doesn't do all styled text. Like some of the text will lose its styling, like block quotes won't come over. So there's definitely things that aren't here and you may not want to use it for your ghost editor right now, but the ghost company or a developer uh, who uses ghost or even craft themselves could kind of expand this one. Uh, they could make it more powerful uh, if they wanted, but this is kind of just very bare bones right now. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend using it um, unless you have very simple needs for your ghost publishing. Uh, Medium is probably the same thing. You just put an API key and then it's going to be the same deal. Um, but yeah, so very cool that it's here and the potential for this is huge, but maybe not ready for prime time um, for everybody, especially more advanced writers. And then the last one is Craft Power Tools. And this one is really cool. This one has some uh, pretty uh, cool features here. <laughs> so we have a find and replace, um, which I don't think Craft has uh, out of the box, um, but I like this lore Ipsum text here. And like, let's just say that's not what I want. So I'm just going to paste it into find. Uh, we're going to ignore case and we're going to uh, find all and it'll find basically the blocks with it active and I can replace, right? So I'll just say instead of Laura Mipsum, I'll do me. There we go. Replace all and it's replaced all of those in the, uh, in the document. So find and replace. Super, you know, normal feature, but works really nicely here. There's advanced selection. So if you want to select something, um, We'll do, again, Birchler, uh, contains, ignore case, uh, and then you can choose any type of block. Um, what style do you want? List style, like custom query. Um, what does that do? Yeah, so you can do some like regular expression stuff here. That's way more advanced. Um, but yeah, basically those have Birchler in it. Um, stats, find and select blocks, two of them have stats. So you can do that sort of thing. Um, and like maybe I just want to export those two things, right? So I can kind of go back and, oops. X out of here, send to apps, send to things, and those two are added to things. Um, so you can kind of see how these work together. That might not be a super useful use case. I think Vine Replace is definitely more useful there. Um, and then advanced actions, these are kind of interesting. Um, we can, so like if I want to select like uh, this, I can apply a style. Um, let's say add a pattern defined. So let's do every time my name is mentioned, set it to bold, or I can do these other things. Um, we'll do set highlight, right? And we'll make it yellow highlighted. So there we go. So now it's highlighted my name every time it comes up here. Uh, that's kind of nice. 
Uh, I can sort things alphabetically. So like, let's select these three, sort alphabetically. There we go, they've been alphabetized. Uh, we could reverse the order that there's currently, we could flip it back, um, convert empty toggles to a bullet. Um, I'm not sure exactly what those are. Uh, and then I can do some custom action stuff, which looks like a little, literally write your own. <laughs> um, so I'm not gonna do that here. Print blocks to console. Um, not sure what that's to do oh, to the console. So here's kind of the, yeah, here's the JSON for um, kind of all those blocks uh, with the data that you would need as a developer to do things with them. So yeah, there's the console coming up again. So this one, probably more, uh, the craft power tools, find and replace is probably the thing you're gonna wanna use actually in your normal day-to-day -day usage, um, but advanced selection might be useful to you. Um, and these guys um, apply in a style like to, um, like let's say stat, I want to, duh, 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 I wanna just set every time I do stat or stats, how about, uh, we'll make it bold. So those two are bolded. So that's kind of how the power tools one works. Find and replace is probably the star of the show there. But yeah, those are the extensions that are available today. It's not a huge list, but I would definitely expect this to grow as this hits uh, a final actual release and third parties can have their own things added to the list of uh, extensions available. And the great thing about them is that they're just downloadable, they're open source, so you can go ahead and get them from anywhere. Craft doesn't have to approve them or anything. They'll just be, as long as they work with the extension system, you'll be able to get them. So yeah, that was a quick look at every single one you can get today. <laughs> Hopefully this was useful. If it was, hit the like button down below and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.